Today I wanted to talk to you about Martin the Monster Selmar, who for most people will be a strong contender for the title The Most Powerful Person You've Never Heard Of. Martin Selmar is the Secretary General of the EU Commission, which is to say he is the head of one of the most powerful institutions in the EU, and by extension the world. And he took that position in a process the EU Parliament, which you may remember is that part of the EU that you can directly vote for, described as coup-like and having stretched and possibly even overstretched the limits of the law. So let's go through exactly what happened here and why we're talking about it. Firstly, the Commission itself. It is the civil service of the EU, 32,000 people strong, but it goes far beyond that. It is the only part of the EU that can propose new legislation and policies, that's right. Not even the European Parliament is allowed to consider legislation without the Commission's approval. It controls how legislation and policies are implemented, it manages the budget of the EU, which is currently about €145 billion Euro a year, it is the government of the EU in everything but name, and Martin Selmar took nearly total control of it in about four minutes. At 9.35 on February the 21st of last year, a meeting of the European Commission was held. At that meeting, Martin Selmar was promoted from President Juncker's Chief of Staff to Deputy Secretary General of the European Commission. He was the only candidate for the position. In a stroke of good luck, the other candidate for the position had decided to withdraw their application shortly before. Immediately after that, and after a promotion that meant Martin Selmar was now eligible for consideration as the Secretary General of the Commission should a vacancy arise, Alexander Italianer, the then Secretary General of the Commission, announced that, as he had previously agreed with President Juncker, he was retiring and that a replacement would be required immediately. I'm not entirely sure why it was required immediately, as one presumes that Mr Italianer wasn't going to just get up and leave the building, and even ignoring that, President Juncker had known that Mr Italianer would be retiring in 2018 since 2015, when Mr Italianer had told him he planned to do so. He confirmed his plans to leave in early 2018 to Juncker in a discussion they had in January of 2018, over a month before the meeting at which Mr Selmar was promoted. After Mr Italianer announced his resignation, Juncker then put forward Martin Selmar as the perfect candidate for the job. After all, he was now Deputy Secretary General and so perfectly suited for it. It did help, of course, that no other candidate was put forward for consideration. So the meeting starts at 9.35am. And by 9.39am, a notification has gone out to journalists in Brussels saying there would be a press meeting held at 10.30am to discuss the changes, which indicates either that the Commission gets through its business at a speed that could be only described as efficient nearly beyond belief, particularly given that the decision to make Mr Selmar the General Secretary of the Commission is recorded on the 32, 32nd page of the minutes of this meeting of the Commission, indicating it actually occurred quite far into the meeting, or Juncker and Selmar thought the matter was already over, and they may as well send out the press release early, considering none of the 28 commissioners present are noted as having expressed any issue with Mr Selmar's promotion, it would appear they were right to do so. So let's talk about why we're talking about this now. In December of 2018, the European Parliament voted on a resolution calling on Mr Selmar to resign. Many MEPs abstained during the vote, probably a wise move given Mr Selmar's political power and his reputation. With only two groups in the European Parliament voting against the motion calling on him to resign, those from the European People's Party, which Selmar has long been linked to, and those from Europe of Nations and Freedom, a group which basically believes the EU shouldn't exist. One imagines the latter group see the continued political existence of Mr Selmar as being rather a helpful tool to damage the EU's democratic credibility. In the end, 70% of MEPs voted in favour of, of his resignation, which I suppose proves that Martin Selmar is actually a man who can bring people together from all over Europe. Selmar's response to this resolution calling on, on him to resign? He told the press that he had no comment to make and he just kept right on trucking. Emily O'Reilly, the European Ombudsman, who is tasked with investigating the EU institutions for abuses of power and maladministration, said that the entire procedure did not follow EU law in letter or spirit and did not follow the Commission's own rules. Her report on Mr Selmar's rapid ascension to his current glorious position was finally published last a uh, couple of weeks ago and it detailed numerous instances of maladministration from the Commission. One MEP said that the Commission, and by extension the entire EU, 
had to decide what was more important to them, the career of Mr Salmar or the credibility of the EU. So the EU Parliament has called for him to resign. The Ombudsman has broke, said his appointment broke the law. The Ombudsman report into his promotion identifies serious maladministration and his position looks to have effectively no legitimacy whilst also giving those who believe the EU is deeply non-democratic a very large stick to beat the EU with. And nothing will happen here. The Commission will simply ignore the voices calling for Selmar to leave. It will say, and has said, simply that it does not accept the findings of the Ombudsman and it will move on as if nothing has happened. Because at the end of the day, it is now very clear that the EU has decided that the career of Mr Selmar is worth more than its democratic credibility.